Hello everyone, welcome to AI Flux. Today we're talking about Meta and some of their new initiatives to push AI forward and basically taking all of their best engineers and saying, we don't want you to work on the metaverse because that was a huge waste of money. So in 2023 has been interesting because Meta entered with a bang by um, fumbling Llama, right? So they accidentally leaked their Llama large language model through a GitHub commit comment. Uh, you were able to just download the whole thing with the torrent. That was their foray into the AI space. Obviously there's been AI work going on at Meta for some time before 2023. Llama was sort of the first step where they, where they wanted to establish, look, we're still working on this. We are still competitive with Google and OpenAI slash Microsoft. So what's cool is now we see a bigger part of that plan coming together with two more additions called SAM and Dino V2. SAM makes sense to start out with because this is seemingly kind of a boring tool, right? Like this isn't generating video from text or doing anything wild, but it does one thing really well that a lot of ML models in the past have struggled with in a pretty foundational way. And I say foundational because the idea of um, classifying or segmenting video and uh, just images in general with machine vision has been a problem that's been in computer science generally for almost a decade, some would say more than a decade. And what's cool with SAM or the segment anything model, which currently has been shown to work on images and can basically work on video as well, is it does this really well in uh, a single shot capability, which means you give it an image and it basically will perfectly segment what it thinks it sees in an image perfectly. This is important because if you want to go forward and do anything after the fact, right? Like say I want to extract horses or I want to copy and duplicate uh, this object. Um, you have to start with the segmentation and a sense of where that is in an image. A good way to think about this that's less technical is if, you, if you've ever done in-painting with Stable Diffusion or one of those models where they have you draw a shape or uh, you go in control net and you draw a shape of a person or you go and um, you want to in-paint something that's a specific shape, um, that kind of selection can now be done automatically. And what's cool is you can use similar approaches to that kind of selection in other ways than just selecting things that appear in an image. You can actually infer with them. So let's jump into the um, demo they have right now. There's also a page that goes into their paper uh, that's linked below. So they go over kind of why you'd want to use this. Um, they say Sam uses a variety of inputs. By this, they mean um, different images, different perspectives can all be used. What's interesting is I'm making a video about a tool that can do this in 3D with nerfs. But for now, they're just showing images and uh, some video. What's interesting is they don't really have any video demos, but they show it right here, right? And um, another big thing with Meta's AI push is all these tools are meant to work together. Um, so you'll see that OpenAI and Microsoft, Google with DeepMind and their other initiatives and Facebook, they're all building competing pipelines and platforms, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the tool that Facebook released before Sam was actually just a orchestration tool meant for their internal use, which is also cool and isn't exciting, you know, visually, but it totally makes sense in the grand plan of Meta, you know, becoming a bigger player in the AI space. Um, so in terms of inferring, this is what I meant. So uh, extensible outputs, they're basically pointing at nerfs here, right? Um, this kind of looking at a stool and then thinking what a stool could look at from different angles, um, that's inference. And it's actually really similar to some stuff we covered in our previous video about unrecord with why um, volumetric rendering and uh, neural radiance fields are so cool with their inference. The other big one is, you know, pr prior zero shot generaliza generalization was not seen to be a novel thing. And a lot of people thought it wouldn't actually even be possible. Uh, but what's cool with, with Sam, as they say, is Sam has learned a general notion of what objects are. This understanding enables zero shot generalization to unfamiliar objects and images without requiring additional training. So basically they're saying you can apply this model to multiple environments and you don't have to deliberately train on an environment to segment properly. They boast that we've trained this on 11 million images with a billion masks. Uh, it's kind of cool. You can get the entire data set now. It's ironic that there's a download button on this since they basically leaked Llama by accident and tried to prevent that explicitly. The other cool thing is they've, they're they building these models so it's easy to understand how they're made. Um, my one qualm with Google a lot of the time is even their papers are pretty occluded. So the idea is that they can 
showcase technically what's going on, but not give away all of their IP. And curiously, Meta is actually better about that. Um, so let's go to the demo. The other cool thing is this is all running in real time in, in real demos. And as you can see, these are all images. So there's, there's no video. Uh, you can upload an image if you want, but I think these are interesting enough as is. So that was it. And now you can see that it can see the dog. I'm guessing this is like grass. Um, and then it can pick out trees. Uh, it's, it's not perfect, but obviously it can tell what a dog is. Um, and then if we do everything, now it'll give you kind of that cool image that you saw in their demo where it highlights everything it thinks it sees. So you can see that there's the dog, there's the grass, and then the foliage. And I think it's looking at different kinds of trees here, but it's sort of hard to see. Uh, okay, we'll go back to the demo again. Um, this one's really cool because I've used um, some of Wolfram Alpha's um, machine vision tools to actually count cells in Petri dishes. Uh, it's something I did in high school, actually. So it's cool to see that these kinds of applications for this are getting better and better. Um, selecting these on their own is harder, right? Because it's this is a complex environment where like there's similar globules and then there's this sort of mess of purple stringy uh, fibrous stuff, but I'm, I'm gonna go to everything and we'll see what it can pull out. Now, a, a big thing here that is worth mentioning is one of the harder problems in segmentation is similarity in different environments, but in the same problem space or in the same image. And you can see here, um, based on size, color, and context, it still pretty much knows what these are. My understanding is that the shade of color um, corresponds with similarity to other objects. So anything that looks sort of green, it's classifying as pretty similar. And then the the biggest difference in highlighting should be the biggest difference in terms of what objects it, it's seeing, which makes sense because like this is dark blue because clearly that's not there. And then uh, these individual objects are clearly selected out. Um, and then what's also cool is you can just like scroll the entire data set they use. So basically um, they trained this in a similar way that a lot of these nerf models are trained where um, they ran segmentation and then sort of fed it into itself to understand when it was working and when it wasn't. Uh, that's how these models can be trained in a pretty quick way without having um, like ridiculous amounts of human intervention to make them work. So yeah, so that's Sam. Um, let me see how long. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this to Sam. Uh, I'm gonna cover Dino V2 in another video. I will hint at it though. So. We mentioned the yeah, this is important. Uh, why you know what on earth? Why, why why would you need segmentation to do this other stuff? So Dyno V2, which will be covered in the next video, is um, a transformer model that uses SAM to act as kind of a first step in its depth modeling cap capabilities, and it makes segmentation on video much easier because with the addition of depth, uh, it's just it's easier to segment because. You know, things that are closer together are easier to look at and whatnot. But um, yeah, so exciting things here. Uh, exciting things with interpolation, with segmentation. Um, Dino V2 video will be out soon. Uh, as always, I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.